Two months ago, I talked about my Deluxe 7, and today I want to share why I still have this camera and plan to keep it. So if you saw my previous video, I talk about the things I like about this camera as a whole, being a compact camera with this super cool zoom lens, with the caveat that yes, it can get pricey to get this camera even used, and that there is a cheaper version from Lumix called the LX101 and LX102. So having used it for now two more months after, from that release of that video, I've had this camera for several months. I think it's been six months at this point. So I want to share a little bit more about why I'm still thinking that I'm going to keep this camera for a lot longer. And keep in mind, I'm a camera gear nerd, so I'm constantly looking at what I have and like to get rid of the things that I don't use. And I try to do that as much as possible so that I don't have things sitting around, not being used and wasting my money. In this example, there's a couple of reasons I still have this camera and that I originally got it. And one of them was the compact size. So if you could see it, uh, it's not a big camera. It's not bulky. It's easy to just carry on you because with the strap or in a bag, uh, taking it to travel. It's, it doesn't take a lot of space. You don't have to worry about switching lenses and you're getting the benefit of a micro four thirds sensor, which is better than a one inch or your phone. So I want to talk about a little bit. Where have I taken this camera? Like what is the benefit of having a compact camera like this? And if you've seen my other video, I've been talking a lot about the Sony a seven C and my uses of, of, of this camera with vintage lenses. Now, if you compare these two, they are almost identical in body size there is very little difference in weight and in size. The biggest difference is this does not have a lens on it right now. So the moment I put a lens on this camera, it will stick out two to three times further out than this does. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, but keep in mind, full frame lenses are bigger most of the time, unless you're, you know, there's a lot of compact options that I recommend, like the Rokinon Samyang line, the tiny series that would make this compact, but for travel and a variety of situations, you don't know how much space you have all the time. You may not have that opportunity to step back or forward to get the shot you want. So that's where something like this comes into play. For example, for travel or for my primary example today, where am I taking this camera? Just everywhere. Like if I go to a restaurant and I want to take pictures, of the food or something new that I'm experiencing, I don't always want to bring a full frame camera with a full frame lens and just making it bigger, you know, bringing attention to myself. This is so compact. People will not take you seriously with this, honestly, even though you have a very nice micro four thirds sensor in it with the capability to go from 24 to 70 millimeters. And like I said in my first video, that's equivalent to a kit lens on any APS-C or full frame camera going from like 28 to 70 or whatever they do the ranges, uh, 3.5 to 5.6, very similar um, depth of field with something like this with a smaller sensor. So recently I took this to a restaurant. It was my first time going to Din Tai Fung. It's an amazing place with, um, it's an amazing place with dumplings and bao and all sorts of food. Um, it was my first time there and I really wanted to capture some images of the food. I mean, not to be too distracting because I wanted to eat. Um, this was perfect to take with me. Uh, it took no space. It was easy to carry. I just popped it out, took the picture, put it away. This is what this camera is really good for. If you're traveling and you don't want to carry extra weight and I mean, you know, with luggage and the weights and all that thing, you try to minimize as much as possible. You carry on. This is nothing to just take with you and have a very capable camera at hand. Yes, you can get, you can pull out your iPhone and take the same pictures. You know what I mean? Like it's, we're so accustomed to using the iPhones or whatever you have, the Samsung Galaxy. Um, it's not hard 
to use your iPhone, but you just can't compare the, the sensor size and the zoom capability, the cleanliness of the image that you're gonna get from something like this, an actual camera with an EVF, with the sensor and the lens, dedicated lens. It's, it's designed for photography. And yes, you can get away with the iPhone, but if you do wanna take it to the next level and you care about that image quality for memories and pictures later on, uh, it just makes sense to use something compact like this. You don't have to get this camera. I think this applies to any compact camera that suits your needs. I mean, whether it's a Sony RX100 or a Lumix LX or whatever series we've got, um, in this case, I'm going for this one for the reasons that I talk about in my first video. But whatever you decide to go, a compact camera is just useful to take anywhere. Now, I wanna get into the RAW and JPEG image and, and the image quality in general for this camera. Um, I love the images coming out of it, just overall. Um, at first, I thought I was gonna download the RAW files and edit on my computer, because, but because of the nature of this camera and how compact it is, I just haven't felt the need to do it. And I'm actually really, really happy with the recipes for the JPEGs in this camera. Once you dig in a little bit more into the menu, you end up with tons of options comparable to Fuji cameras. Obviously you're not getting like film emulations, but you get a really nice black and white one and a neutral that you can adjust with various parameters. And I have it set to my favorite neutral parameters and my favorite black and white parameters that I can just easily switch back and forth. And I haven't felt the need to go back and download these to the computer and edit. I just go straight for the JPEGs and I'm happy with it. And that's a testament to, I think, Panasonic and Leica's partnership in making this camera have really nice colors, or at least good enough colors that you can just tweak on your phone versus having the need to edit a RAW file. Finally, the one of the reasons I, I really like this camera and I'm still using it is because I always loved the RX100 series and how easy they were to carry around. And I remember taking it to my first trip to England and just enjoying using it. But this is giving me the same usage with a bigger sensor and it just, it's also a little bit bigger, so it's easier to hold. I added a leather grip to it that's made for it, so it's even easier to hold. I don't have the need to add the grip uh, that they sell, so I would recommend that if you do get something like this, um, the leather grip is actually enough. At least for me, I don't feel the need to have the extra bump in the, you know, those extra hand grips they make. Um, I have big hands and I've, with the pressure that I'm holding it, and it does have a little thumb rest. Um, I haven't had any issues just quickly doing that. Um, so it's still a very great option and alternative to a lot of those one inch sensor cameras. And even the APS-C cameras. Yes, you can get like a Fuji X100 or whatnot, but if you've been following the trends, those things are jumping crazy in price and you only get one focal length. The moment you add uh, a variable zoom to an APS-C or a full frame, it's just getting a lot bigger. And if you really want to be conscious about the size and how much weight you're carrying on you or how much you want to stand out, that sort of thing, this is still a really good option in my opinion. And then I, I do want to go back to the dot. Yes, it is. it was made with partnership with Leica and Panasonic, Panasonic Lumix. Um, you don't have to get the one with the Leica. Like, I think I just went for it because I, I had compared the pricing with the, uh, the RX 100s from the Sony and the price was so similar. I was like, why not just get the fancy red dot? Um, but you could find them used. You can get the Panasonic version just as good. I recommend it. And it's not like, you're not you have to shape your expectations with a camera like this. This is not a full frame. This is not a DSLR. It's not going to get you award-winning images, but it will let you capture all sorts of images on the fly without having to miss the moment. You know what I mean? And 
that is valuable. And the more you use a camera or have done photography, you come to value things like this where you don't want to take all your gear. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to do a quick check-in on how it's going with this camera. I hope you enjoyed the image samples and stick around for more. Thank you.